Sammy Hagar here. Welcome to another Rock and Roll Road Trip. Now, this episode is a little freaky because we're talking with three drummers. Not just three drummers, but three of the greatest drummers in rock and roll and music today. They've done it all. Uh, superstars. We've got Mr. Kenny Aronoff, played with everybody in the planet. We've got Sheila E., Platinum, Grammy R's, you know, all that kind of stuff. And we got Mr. Jason Bonham, and uh, he plays with me, but uh, don't hold uh, him. Grammy winning artist. Don't take artists, that against uh, him. Wait, don't hold that against Grammy him. Grammy winning artist, too. Oh, that's right. Okay. <laughs> um, thank you very well, much. Anyway, so uh, welcome. And so, Sheila, we kind of go back yes. like, to San Francisco and stuff. With Absolutely. The early, when I was first starting in Montrose and all those early 70s, I'd see you at SIR. SIR. There. Absolutely. So, being a drummer that came out from behind the drums. I mean, there's, you know, there's very few guys, girls, anybody that's ever done that. You're one of the few that actually came up, became a front person, uh, name on the marquee, you know, Don Henley and Buddy Miles. I mean, you know, it's, it's a rare <laughs> right. thing. So did you plan that? I mean, how did that happen? Every drummer probably wishes that would happen, right? Well, how it's, the hell did it's, you do that? It's, it's, <laughs> well, it's different because I started playing percussion, so I wasn't a drummer. I, I'm a percussionist who actually plays drums a little bit of drums. And um, so growing up listening to my dad play, it was always percussion in the house. When his band would rehearse in the living room, uh, his drummer would get off and was like, I want to play drums too. So I'd get off for a minute and like, oh, okay. Uh, long story short, we go into um, me playing percussion with my dad at 15. Uh, professionally, I was like, this is what I want to do. And your dad one of the greatest oh, he's amazing. in the world. No, he's I mean, come on, still man. amazing. We just played eight shows together. He's still killing, killing it, kicking butt. But then um, I was introduced to Billy Cobham did a, a record on my dad and I, and that's how I met George Duke. So with George Duke, I go to his band, and in Dugo at the time, and Dugo Chancellor's playing drums, George had a song called Reach For It, and, and Dugo wanted to be in the front, and so he said, you play drums. I was like, okay. So I played drums, and next thing I was like, yes, this is what I want to do is play some rock and roll, some funk. It's that easy, folks. You it can become a superstar, easy. sell millions of records, <laughs> and get a Grammy Award and all that stuff just because somebody <laughs> invites you to sit down at the kit. Yeah, so, Kenny. Right. Yeah. Kenny, we all know that you've played with everyone. Yeah. Is there anyone that you haven't played with? I would love to play live with Jeff Beck once. You haven't? I recorded with him. He wasn't there. Oh, he wasn't there. He wasn't there. Oh, that's different. Someone told, <laughs> I know, someone told me he was going to be there, and then, then I realized he ain't coming in to track. Jeff Beck doesn't track. He comes in, plays a solo once or twice, and leaves. Okay, so we'll get Jeff. Jeff, can yeah. you hear this? Okay, we'll get Jeff yeah, for Jeff you. Jeff Beck. Okay, but who is... I need, no, I need some high Jeff, I mean, okay, I will. Need some it started high in Jack rock. and Diane. Is yeah. That, that's my, you, right? My, 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 my first break was with John Cougar Mellencamp, and when I did this drum solo on Jack and Diane, which was either I was going to get fired or I was in the band. <laughs> it's legendary. And, yeah, uh, and so that launched... I blew his career up, but launched my career. Like, all of a sudden, who's this guy? Anyway, I did that for 17 years. Good sound of records. And then, um, then I went to Bob Seger. Then I did 10 years with Joe Cogger, 10 years with Melissa Etheridge. I did uh, this super group called Chicken Foot. <laughs> I did uh, uh, like uh, John Fogarty from Creedence Clearwater for about 25 years. And then I've even filled in with Sticks, Goo Goo Dolls, stuff that like that. That means you're like 110 right now. I mean, well, there was overlap. There was overlap. That's a lot of <laughs> That's very special to have played with that many people. Who's the biggest asshole you've ever played with besides me? Ooh. No, besides me. No, you're not a big, you're not a big Excuse asshole. Oh, no. No. Sorry, dude. You're He's image, a little. You're, you're a nice uh, guy. Come on, who's the worst guy you ever played with, Kenny? Who was the most trouble? Who gave you the most? Come on I can't now. say that. Don't well, say names. All right, okay, you'll never no, work again. No, I, okay, I forget you. Jason, yourself. You. Yourself. <laughs> Jason's a great singer. People don't realize this guy's in my band. He, at Soundcheck, you're always singing. You're singing Bad Company songs. You're singing soul uh, tunes. Yeah. You're singing anything. But it now, was, in my but band, know, but you won't know. sing. Yeah, I, I'm just in a our frustrated. Band, in our band, you won't sing. I, I always say, if you can't do it brilliantly, you do. I'd rather not. Is it hard to sing it. and play at the same time? Um, yeah, definitely. I Who's mean, how best? you do it with the breathing. The breathing, uh, I mean, even like Phil Collins, who was one of my total heroes who I got to work with, yeah, you, you find you can't sing and play, unless... Yes, you can. See, okay. I do it all the time. See, what was it like playing with Prince? Come on now. Yeah. You should ask, I wish he was here, as you could ask him, how was it like playing with Sheila E? I wish I could. Yeah. 
<clears throat> it was, uh, we had a blast. Did you learn a lot? I mean, you came as an accomplished musician, don't get me wrong, but did you learn about songwriting or pop music or did he, did you get something out of that? The only thing that was different that, one of the things that was different that I could say was coming from recording with other artists here when I come to Los Angeles, um, being in the studio with other artists, it's like, oh, tape up your cowbell. Uh, I hear a rattle, tape this up. It was so clean and, you know, it kind of took away the sound. Everything had to be, so that sound was just like this. When we come to LA, mm -hmm. it was like, there was no movement. With Prince, we would go in the studio, we'd barely finish, you know, setting up and he just counted off and we'd go into it. It's like, if the um, bass is distorted, that's the sound he wants is let's distort the bass. and. You know, the cowbells are rattling, you know, there's some stuff on the timbales, just leave it, you know, that's it's the way. It's about the ring. Vibe, right? It's, it's all, all about the ring. So when you get, yeah, so yeah. when you get, when everything is the way that it's supposed to be, that also then feeds into the ambience of the song because you've got stuff happening where you really don't hear it, but it's there and it's, it's, it's yeah. making that, that funk sound funky, you know. You don't want to make it clean. Oh, that stuff sounded good. I, I, just, I just heard 1999 this morning. I was just going, oh, I'm going to go see Gina. You know, <laughs> and Prince, I had to, so I had to bring up Prince. <laughs> Stupider than that. You cannot. You cannot get any stupider than that. Or can you? <laughs>